The government's made a formal offer to the NHS Staff Council that I've just come out of a meeting with them. I'm very pleased that they've agreed to recommend to their members. It will be for a 5% pay rise next year, 2023-24, but also an additional lump sum in terms of this year, which is additional to the award through the pay review body, which was on average 4.75%. Uh, and then what that will mean, for example, for a newly qualified nurse is over 1,800s this year on top of that PRB uh, award uh, and a pay rise of over £1,300 next year. And obviously that increases for more senior nurses in higher grades. Now, of course, some of that money for this year is a one-off payment, which means it doesn't go long-term into uh, the salaries of those people. You've said frequently that you wouldn't look at this year's pay. Why didn't you do this earlier? Well, we have listened to the concerns of the trade unions. We've had meaningful discussions with them. We've both sides have engaged constructively. Obviously, the starting position from the number of the unions was much higher. Uh, and so both sides have worked together to reach a settlement uh, which is both affordable to the wider taxpayer and balances the very real pressures we recognise that NHS workers have been on. So the balance was required on both sides. That is what the talks explored. And that's why I very much welcome that we've reached a settlement with the NHS Staff Council that balances our commitment in government to get inflation down, to look at the cost and what was affordable to the wider economy, to taxpayers, but that also recognised the very real pressures that NHS staff had faced through the pandemic uh, and particularly through the recent winter. So an important question, how much is it going to cost and how will it be funded? Uh, well, we've been clear that it will not come at the expense of uh, uh, impact on patients. Obviously, how these things are funded are a matter for the Chancellor, and we discuss that uh, within government. Uh, but we've been he very hasn't offered clear. any new money. He didn't in the we've budget. Been very clear in terms of the conditions of the discussions we had with the trade unions that this will not come from patient-facing aspects. Of course, we will look at areas of underspend, areas of administrative saving, and discuss these things with the Treasury in the usual way. But the commitment is one that the trade unions have recognised is meaningful, it reflects very constructive engagement with them. It means there will be a lump sum additional for NHS staff this year, recognising the pressures uh, and a 5% settlement for next year. The funding thing is important though. There are hospital trusts who are very concerned that even if some of this has to come out of existing budgets, it's going to mean more pain for patients. Well, we're being clear that as part of the discussions we had, this would not come from uh, areas of the budget that impact on patients. So we, those was part of the terms of the discussions that we had. Uh, that was the nature of the negotiation. And that was part of the mandate I received from the Prime Minister and from the Chancellor. There are many people, though, who will look at this and say this dispute has been going on for months. There was talk of a one-off payment uh, several weeks ago, months ago, in fact. Were you blocked from doing that and pursuing that by the Treasury? Well, we take decisions cross-government. Uh, these things are entered into collectively. Of course, part of my job as the Health and Social Care Secretary is to advocate for the NHS within government in exactly the same way that the Education Secretary will do so for teachers or the Transport Secretary for train drivers. My job is to make the case for the NHS within government. Of course, that is something that I have been doing over recent months, but we make these decisions collectively. I'm very pleased we've reached a settlement which the NHS Staff Council feel able to recommend to their members. It balances our commitment to get inflation down, to uh, guard the interests of the taxpayer, but does so in a balanced way that also uh, reflects the, the very real pressures that the NHS has been under uh, over recent years. But you've been forced to the negotiating table, haven't you, by the strike action. And for those people who've had operations and treatment cancelled, postponed potentially for months or years, they're going to say you should have done something sooner. Well, there's been significant movement in terms of what the trade unions were originally asking for. Uh, for example, one of the trade unions originally was suggesting a 19% settlement. So there's been movement on all sides. They moved some is, time ago, though, didn't they? Well, uh, not to the position that we are on today. So there's been further constructive engagement. We've had intensive talks over many days. Uh, there's been movement on both sides. And that reflects the balanced nature of the settlement we've reached, uh, looking after the interests of taxpayers, getting inflation down, but recognising the real pressures that the NHS has faced. And just finally, I know you'll be pleased, of course, that you seem to have reached an agreement here, but junior doctors, this doesn't include junior doctors, does it? 
No, and my door is open. I look forward to having uh, discussions with them. Uh, clearly, we entered uh, the talks with the Agenda for Change trade unions on the basis of them suspending their strikes, uh, respecting the engagement principles. Uh, I welcome the, the leadership that the trade unions have shown in those discussions. We've built uh, uh, discussions that have respected the confidentiality uh, throughout. Uh, both sides have been willing to work in a very constructive way, and I hope the junior doctors will take note of that and reflect that in their approach over the coming weeks. And your message to them is they need to suspend strike action, is that right? Yes, that's the principles which uh, the other trade unions accepted, the RCN, uh, Unite, Unison, the GMB, all respected that. We've offered the same terms to the junior doctors that were accepted by those other trade unions, uh, and that's what I hope the junior doctors will respond to. But a, a request from them for a pay rise of 35% is not affordable. That's why we need to see from them the same sort of leadership that we've seen from the trade unions in the Agenda for Change contract.